Expedition 27 is the first long-duration space flight for each member of the International Space Station crew. Russian Air Force Colonel Dmitry Kondratiev wanted to be a pilot since his early childhood, growing up in south-central Russia. I was born in uh, uh, Irkutsk. It's a Siberian city uh, nearby uh, Lake Baikal. But uh, my parents moved from that uh, city to another one, uh, to Novosibirsk, also uh, one big uh, Siberian city, when I was one month old. Kondratiev's family was living in Almaty, then the capital of Kazakhstan, by the time he was a teenager. He completed pilot training before his high school graduation and then attended the Kachinsk Air Force Pilot School in Volgograd and graduated as a pilot engineer. Kondratiev flew fighters in the Soviet and then Russian Air Force for seven years before his selection as a cosmonaut in 1997. Uh, for me, uh, being a cosmonaut is the next step in my career because uh, I'm a military pilot and uh, I flew uh, Russian uh, planes. And uh, the next step, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, natural to fly to space. While completing basic space training at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, Kondratiev also earned his qualification as an economist from the Moscow State University for Economy, Statistics, and Information Technology. He later graduated from the Yuri Gagarin Air Force Academy. Kondratiev trained as a backup crew member for two International Space Station missions and on the prime crew for Expedition 13 before a crew reassignment and served a year as the Russian Space Agency's Director of Operations at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. He's also earned his U.S. private pilot's license and airline transport pilot's license while getting ready for his first flight in space. I think uh, in 50 years, uh, people will be on almost every planet in our solar system. There is no uh, uh, choice for human, uh, human beings, for people uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, fly to, the, to, to fly to space. Paolo Nespoli is a native of Milan, Italy, and grew up in nearby Verano Brianza. He first dreamed of flying in space as a boy when he saw astronauts walk on the moon. As he got older, he found he had an interest in how things worked. I was uh, decent uh, in the scientific area. I was able to use my hands, uh, understanding uh, uh, mechanics and taking everything apart, as my father and mother would say, and, mm -hmm. and putting together having some leftovers, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. And, um, and I always like uh, challenging myself. Drafted into the Italian Army at age 20, Nespoli became a paratrooper and parachute instructor in Pisa then a special forces operator in Livorno, and spent two years as part of Italy's contribution to a multinational peacekeeping force in Lebanon in the mid-1980s. I learned in that period that with uh, enough training, enough knowledge, uh, the right equipment and the right psychological disposition, you can do almost everything, almost anything, almost. And, uh, and so, uh, the dream of going in space came back again. So Nespoli retired from active duty to complete a Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering and a Master's in Aeronautics and Astronautics, both at the Polytechnic University of New York. He returned to Italy as a design and test engineer working on space equipment and joined the European Space Agency as an astronaut training engineer in 1991. He worked in spaceflight training at the Johnson Space Center before becoming an astronaut himself, Nespoli was chosen by the Italian Space Agency in 1998 and joined the ESA Astronaut Corps a month later. He completed astronaut training with the 2000 class of astronaut candidates at JSC and then trained on the Soyuz spacecraft in Star City prior to his 2007 space shuttle mission that delivered the Italian-built Harmony node to the International Space Station, which he sees as a tool to help us move out into the solar system. Going to Mars is another, it's an order of magnitude of effort uh, or complexity than going to the moon. And there's a lot of things that we need to really figure out uh, before we can do there. Space Station has a, a, a central role now in letting us acquire data so can we, we can plan for that. Katie Coleman is the daughter of a Navy family. She was born in Charleston, South Carolina, 
and grew up in San Francisco, Virginia Beach, the suburbs of Washington, D.C. By the time she graduated high school in Fairfax, Virginia, she had some ideas about what she wanted to do with her life. I was interested in being in the military. I was interested in science. I loved chemistry. And at the same time, I always wished for just a little bit more adventure. At MIT, Coleman was on the intercollegiate crew team and an ROTC student while earning her bachelor's degree in chemistry. She credits a visit to the college by astronaut Sally Ride with inspiring her to think about becoming an astronaut. And so she was a scientist, and at the same time, she was also um, somebody that was helping to explore the universe, and she got to fly jets, scuba dive, all these things that I loved. And I, I was actually just uh, so inspired to meet her. And it made a big difference to me to have met her that day. Commissioned a second lieutenant in the Air Force after graduation, Coleman began her career in graduate school at the University of Massachusetts. She continued her work as a research chemist while on active duty and earned a Ph.D. in polymer science and engineering from UMass the year before she was selected as an astronaut in 1992. Coleman spent almost 16 days in space on the second U.S. microgravity laboratory mission in 1995 and was at the controls in 1999 to deploy the Chandra X-ray Observatory. In both cases, she was involved in the kind of science she believes the International Space Station will support for our future. To me, it's hard to measure and compare, but the fact that we can do science experiments up in space that we simply cannot do down here means it should be done. If we can do it and we can do it safely or as safe as we possibly can, then we should go there and we should do these things. Andrei Barisenko was born and raised in Leningrad and grew up with a great desire to read, especially science fiction about space by the most popular writers in the East and the West. He was 15 when he joined a cosmonautics club for young people. That's where I met kids just like me who wanted to become pilots or cosmonauts. And uh, that's where I learned a lot about aviation, cosmonautics, um, astronomy. And the more I learned, the more I became confident that this was something I wanted to dedicate my life to. After graduating from a high school specializing in physics and mathematics, Barisenka attended the Leningrad Military Mechanical Institute and earned a degree in the dynamics and control of spacecraft. He spent two years as an engineer with a military unit before transferring to the Rocket Space Corporation Energia as a specialist in the motion control systems of the Mir space station. He became a shift flight director in 1999 and was leading the shift the day Mir was deorbited in March 2001. He then became a shift flight director for the International Space Station at Mission Control in Koryolov and was selected as a cosmonaut in 2003. He hopes his first space flight will help open the way to space for everyone. The requirements for certain medical parameters of uh, space candidates, space flight candidates, have been great reduced. And this is the way it should be because uh, space is not something for selected individuals, but so that every human being who wants to go there should have this opportunity. Russian Air Force Colonel Alexander Samokutyayev was born in Penza, southeast of Moscow. He recalls his kindergarten class receiving the gift of a replica of the spacecraft that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit. When I looked at that rocket, I understood that it was mine. And I protected that vehicle, I protected that rocket, and everybody called me Gagarin. And that was the moment when I understood that I wanted to become a cosmonaut. As a boy, he loved science and ice hockey. He even attended a professional hockey academy. But after high school, he chose to pursue his dream of flying in space. Semakutyayev went to Chernigov Air Force Pilot School in Ukraine, graduating in 1992 and starting his career in the Russian Air Force. He graduated from the Gagarin Air Force Academy in 2000 and was assigned to the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center as a division chief before being selected to start cosmonaut training himself in 2003.
We are just a little piece of that humankind that is trying to achieve new heights for our race. Perhaps sometime in the future we will be able to find some other human being, some other life out there who is sharing the space with us. Perhaps it will happen during our lifetime. Ron Guerin was born and raised in Yonkers, New York, just north of New York City. One of his most vivid childhood memories came on a Sunday night in July, 1969. It was the 50th anniversary, uh, wedding anniversary of my great grandparents. And we had a big family party. And you know, at one point during the party, we all gathered around this black and white TV. And you know, I, along with you know, millions and millions of other people around the world, watched those first steps on the moon. And that day, I said, this is what I want to be when I grow up. But he went to college without knowing what he would do, since the U.S. wasn't flying people in space at the time. Shuttle Columbia's first flight during his sophomore year solved that problem. After he finished his bachelor's degree in business economics at the State University of New York College at Oneonta, he went to officer training school to earn a commission in the Air Force. Garin flew in combat in the Persian Gulf War. Later, while stationed in Florida, he earned a Master's of Aeronautical Science at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and a Master's of Aeronautical Engineering from the University of Florida. Garin attended the Navy Test Pilot School and was Operations Officer of the 40th Flight Test Squadron when he was selected as an astronaut in 2000. He made his first spaceflight on the shuttle mission that delivered the Kibo Laboratory Module to the International Space Station in 2008 and retired from the Air Force as a colonel in 2009. A very important uh, aspect of the research that we're doing on board the space station is basically to learn how we can live for a longer and longer periods of time in space to get farther and farther away from the Earth so that we could reach out and do all the exploration that we want to do in the future. But the other part of the research, uh, which is equally as important, if not more, is how can we make life better on planet Earth. 